Arriving in Afghanistan is breathtaking. As the sun peeks over the miles of snow-covered mountains that stretch as far as the eye can see in every direction, one has to wonder how a land of such beauty can be a near eternal war zone. Many believe this is the land where Cain slew Abel. This is the only land where Alexander the Great left defeated having lost as many Macedonian soldiers in one day's battle as the four years of victories before. It's a land where the British suffered and left in the 19th century and the Soviets suffered and left in the 20th. It is where we have come to tell the stories of our Ohio soldiers deployed here since last summer. This is a 50 caliber machine gun. I mean, this is it. This is a war zone, so the fight is on and, you know, there's no downtime here. We don't take any days off here. It has taken nearly a year, dozens, if not hundreds of emails, all kind of hoops to jump through. But finally, we are here in Afghanistan with the Ohio National Guard. Our journey has led us here, forward operating base Sharana in the Paktika province, which borders Pakistan. We are here with the 112th Engineer Battalion, known as Task Force Predator. It is a unit of approximately 800 men and women, nearly 200 of them from Ohio and most of those from Columbus, Cleveland, and Cincinnati. The unit's main job is to clear the road of IEDs, or improvised explosive devices. Those are the roadside bombs which have killed so many of our military. We are with them for the 88th mission of their deployment. Let's bring it in. Lieutenant Garland Kip Fleming is a Transportation Safety Administration Supervisor at Port Columbus when he's not deployed with the Guard. On this morning in February, he is in charge of a mission to the village of Sharana. The safety of his men and women are in his hands. Gracious Father, we thank you for this day, for bringing us all together. Lord, we ask that you be with us. After everything is ready, Everyone is where they need to be. All possible scenarios gone over. The convoy heads out of the base or leaves the wire. Yeah, we're leaving the gate right now. It's right up here, straight in front. The unit knows these roads very well. They are filled with soldiers from other units and even Afghan soldiers and Afghan police. But what the 112th focuses on is the route below. I'll look for rocks on the side of the road and stuff like that for for basically um, indications of hazards, but you see the stuff everywhere. A pile of moved rocks, dirt that looks out of place, or dirt that doesn't look like it's shifted with the wind could be an indication that someone has planted a bomb. Even a dead dog on the side of the road could have an IED inside of it. If the 112th had found anything, they would have called out the most advanced equipment in the world that finds bombs in the dirt. Gone are the days of reinforced Humvees gambling on the roads. The routes are still dangerous, and there are still soldiers being killed, but the vehicles are safer than they used to be. There are GPR trucks called Huskies, which find the bombs in the dirt. Well, we've been a lot more successful with this, and uh, we, our fine rates are a lot higher, and uh, less people are getting blown up. There are trucks and tools called buffaloes that get the bombs out of the dirt. Well, once we find an IED in the ground, dig it up, get it off the side of the road, render it safe. Uh, so we're able to basically interrogate the ground here and dig up the ID. And if we find it, that's going to save lives instead of it finding us. They have confidence on this route. They have been here many times before. We pass through the city of Shirana, but we don't stop. This is a town of nearly 50,000 Afghans. This is actually what we call a typically a friendly area um, because most of the, the inhabitants, they're just their locals that work in the area. Uh, when we come through, we normally see a lot of activity. On the way back to the base, the mood is lighter. They're even playing music over the headphones. But then, when we get out of one of the heavily armored trucks on the road, there are loud explosions approximately three to four miles away. NBC4 photographer Andrew Banks is rolling as apparent roadside bombs go off in the distance. 
Uh, we heard something. Something went on over there, right? Any Roger. Idea what that was? That explosion over there a little bit ago. Uh, it would be my guess. It was probably a, a controlled detonation of some kind. I'm not meaning sure. What? Meaning that they either had a, a UXO, which is an unexploded type of ordnance that they found, and they were just detonating it so that it didn't hurt someone. Later in the day, we find out that the ordnance or bombs were found by members of the Afghan National oh. Army and we were in their base when their soldiers, also being trained by the Ohioans, came back safe, celebrating their successful mission. As for the Ohio unit, their 88th mission is over. Everyone is coming back to the base alive and unharmed. The Ohio National Guardsmen here are doing an outstanding job. They're, each individual soldier is really dedicated uh, to their mission and uh, doing an outstanding job. They overcome daily challenges with ease. Uh, they are truly making a difference with the Afghan people and uh, the nation of Afghanistan. After this mission, a snowstorm hit. The snow fell, blew, and piled up for three solid days. During this time, there are no missions. Just time to wait until the weather improves. Time to anticipate this unit's 89th mission.